Hey everyone, welcome back. My last video I talked a little bit about how a company called Banggood.com had been sending me a bunch of toys to play around with and test out. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the Z-Wave sensors that they sent me, set them up, see how they behave, and see if they're really the best bang for your buck. So just like any hobby, one of the biggest concerns with home automation can be cost. When you first start out especially, it's very difficult to get up and running. Every single sensor, every single component that you add to it has a dollar value attached to it. This is why I was excited when a company called Banggood.com reached out to me and they offered to send me some products to test. The big thing about them is they seem to have some really low cost devices and I was hoping that they'd perform and they'd work just as well as some of the more expensive ones. So today what I'm going to do is we're going to set up two sensors that were sent to me by banggood.com. One of them is a open close sensor, uh, sometimes called a read sensor. It's the type of thing you'd put on a door to monitor when a door is open and closed. And the other one is a moisture or a wet dry sensor. Uh, these can be used to put uh, around a sink or a dishwasher, any place that you may have water and they'll actually monitor for the presence of water and alert you if, uh, if any is found. So let's take a look, see if we can't get these up and running and see if they're worth it. Okay, so here we are in SmartThings. We're gonna go ahead and do add device and you triple click on the button on the device which puts it in pairing mode. And we just give it a second here. Maybe it was too fast. Oh, and there it is, uh, Z-Wave door window sensor. So SmartThings has found it, I'm gonna click on it, and you option to rename it, and save. So that was pretty simple. Uh, confirmed paired devices, and back into the main screen, and there we go, Z-Wave door window sensor, and it's already reporting back that it's open, so let's uh, go ahead and put the lid back on the device here. Oh, and while I'm doing that, we can see that the battery just checked in, 87%. See if we can close the device up. And there we go, look at that, closed. And open it up, hold on, open it up. And open, perfect. So it's working just the way we would expect it to in SmartThings. Okay, so let's jump over to OpenHab. Uh, we're gonna wanna go to Inbox and add a thing. Z-Wave binding, and it's gonna start the searching. And at this point, I'm gonna triple click on the device. And it should show up, and there it is, Node 54. So with uh, OpenHab, it's gonna find the device, and now it's actually pulling it in the background. And this should finish. Uh, hopefully by the time we go look at it, we'll actually have more information. Okay, and there we go, the scan has finished. So let's click on the little check mark next to node 54 and we'll give it a name so that we can recognize it. So we'll call it Banggood Open Close. We'll save it as a thing. And that's it. Now from here, I usually like to jump over into Habmin. Uh, manage my devices a little bit better. This is another interface in OpenHab. And sure enough, let's scroll down, and there it is, Banggood Open Close. And good, it's actually identified who the manufacturer is and everything we need. Now, at this point, it hasn't actually linked the channels. So I do most of my editing in um, brackets. Uh, it's just a, an editing tool that I use for all of my um, uh, files in OpenHub. So I'm gonna jump over to that. And here I've got my file. Now I had this in here before as, uh, as node 53, so I'm just gonna re-edit that, make it node 54. Uh, I'm gonna do that both for the open close sensor and the battery. So it technically has two things it reports. It has a third one we could add if we wanted. We could have um, the tamper switch, but I'm not gonna bother with that one right now. Let me just, uh, here we go, we update the battery. So we wanna change the name and the node and the information that it's using to create the item in the items file. And when that's done, we will hit save and let's jump over to the logs and sure enough, we can see the items were added and the old items were taken away and jump back over to have been. And there we go, the channels have successfully linked so you can see those connected now to the two items. And now let's just test this out and go back up here. And if we actually open and close the device, 
There we go, untriggered, it's closed, and we open it up again, and we should see triggered. There we go, so it's working in OpenHab as well. So let's uh, take a closer look at the devices themselves. Well, the first one is the open close sensor. It's a really nice little package. It, it has two components to it. Uh, one of them is basically just a magnet, and this would go on one side of the door. The other one is where all the electronics are. Um, and essentially what this is, is just a small little form factor like this. And what it will do is, this has the Z-Wave component, it has a battery in it, and it has a sensor in it. And essentially the way this works is whenever the, the magnet gets close to the sensor, it closes a switch inside this, or it opens a switch inside this that says, uh, send a signal off to the Z-Wave controller that the door is closed. When you pull it apart, it opens and it says, send a signal that the, the, the sensor is open. So, really easy to work with. Um, it's got a little button on here that you can use a paper clip or your fingernail and it essentially opens up. And if you look really close, I don't know if that's going to focus, you can see inside there, you can actually see that this right here is the sensor that trips when it goes off. Down at uh, this end we have a button which is used to include it and exclude it from Z-Wave networks. And otherwise it's fairly simple. It shipped with a battery. This is a, it's a CR14250, 14250. There it is. And uh, essentially you just put that in here and you can see the little light is coming up, sending a signal out. This one is a wet dry sensor. And it's a nice small form factor. It comes with a small mount so that you can actually mount it to a wall. Um, and then it comes with the main component. There it is. All right. And this one here also has a, uh, an extension sensor essentially. And this plugs in here using a little 3.5 millimeter jack. And then you would plug the remote sensor into the holder like this. So this may be mounted on say the side of an inside cabinet and you could run this sensor down underneath to where the water is going to be dripping. And very similar to the other one, the top on this screws off battery that we have in this one is a CR2 lithium 3 volt battery that focuses. There we go. The components are all in there for the Z-Wave. You've got the button up here and that will put it in Z-Wave pairing mode. The quality in the build of these is actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I'm not too worried. These are something you're going to really mount and never really touch again. But it's nice to know that the plastics are pretty good. It doesn't feel like cheap quality. Pretty much so far we're looking at the same type of quality I expect from a more expensive counterpart. So thanks so much to Banggood. Definitely check out their site, banggood.com. Search for Z-Wave. You'll see all the products we looked at today. Um, really fantastic open close sensor. I'm definitely going to look at getting some more of these. The water one we didn't get a chance to use. They actually show, or they actually sent me the EU one. We don't have the US one yet, but I would assume that the uh, Z-Wave would work exactly the same as the other. So I'm hopeful when that one's in stock, I'm going to take a look. If you're interested in trying this one, leave me a comment. We'll see if we can get someone in the EU to actually take a look and confirm it's working on their uh, Z-Wave Spectrum. So it's a good lesson for you right there. If you are looking for Z-Wave products, it's important to remember, I believe there are actually three different bands across the world. So you're going to want to make sure, especially if you're ordering from uh, sites overseas, that you're picking the one for your region. So that's it guys, another quick look at a couple devices from Banggood. They promised to send over some more, I believe there's a motion sensor on its way, so I'll give that a try. If you like this video and you haven't already, please subscribe below. There's also a little bell there, if you click that you're going to get notified every time I upload a new video. On top of that, comments would be really great. If you guys are liking these and there's something you want me to keep doing or something you want me to do differently, let me know. And guys, that's it, I'll see you in the next video.